All right, everybody, welcome to Unscripted from my basement and soon-to-be studios at The Junction in Old Hilliard. We're going to run real fast today because Coach uh, is qual you know, just, just kind enough to give me some of his time, and he's a busy, busy man. We actually got some breaking news here two seconds before we jumped on about Coach Roy Williams, so I'd love to get his feedback on that. But let me – he needs no introduction, but let me run through a quick introduction because uh, I really want to get to the meat of what our conversation is today with – Coach Jimmy Dykes, um, uh, college player, coach uh, at the college level, a husband, a father, a man of faith. He is an ESPN college basketball analyst and author of the book, which I really want to talk about today. The film doesn't lie. Uh, coach, welcome to Unscripted. Hey, Aaron. Thanks for having me, man. It's uh, great to be on with you. And I know that Roy Williams news kind of <laughs> hits you because you're a, you're a Carolina fan that you are. But man, what a career that he's had and man he loves that North Carolina University and and uh just I'm, I'm so happy for coach I've gotten to know him pretty well over the years and he deserves now to do whatever he wants to do for as long as he wants to do it absolutely he's earned that right you know and um uh yeah and we could probably spend 20 minutes just talking about coach Roy but uh, uh you're an SEC guy and um I you know and 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 I have been a fan of your coverage of college basketball as long as I've been a college basketball fan um so I I'm just so honored that you would be on with us today and I really don't I, you know I could literally sit here and just give you <laughs> roses as they say today uh, all day long because I'm just a massive fan and you know that we've exchanged a lot of email um what I really want to do is jump into the book because your book um the film doesn't lie is one of the top three books I've ever read. And I think it might be pushing quiet strength by Tony Dungy is maybe number one. Thank um, you. It, it rocked my world coach. And I, 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 anybody that hears this, I want them to hear that this isn't your standard book review. This book rocked my world. And I've no other people that have picked it up that it's rocking their world too. So can we jump into some quotes um, from the book and, and just have you maybe unpack those a little bit just to give people an idea of what the book is about. Um, sure. Do you want to start? You, let's let's tee it up first. Why did you write the book? Well, I, yeah, out of obedience, Aaron, out of obedience, God really kind of, as he will do at certain times in our life, laid something on my heart that I knew I was called to do. Uh, so I wrote it out of obedience with with no pre preconceived perception at all what he would do with the book, how he wanted to use it. I just know that I was supposed to write it, clear my heart and write what he uh, told me to write. So I've been really amazed, as always, when God calls us to do something, how he ends up using it. I've seen it, the impact that it's had on so many people across the country, not just coaches, but just normal, everyday guys and, and, and people in life that are taking the time to get quiet before God and really evaluate where they are, like we do as coaches, and study our game film. That's where you get better. And that's kind of how it all went down, and I've been very blessed. It's been out now for a little over a year. It's really taken off in the last few months with a lot of men's accountability, cell groups, small groups within their within their churches, kind of using it as a as a workbook to, to work through, uh, which is pretty easy to do. If you read the book, you realize, yeah, this it could also be a workbook. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of how it got started. And I'm 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 very, very blessed, very humbled that God continues to use that book in a lot of people's lives. It's awesome. Um, so let me fly through quotes because I know our, our time's limited. The voice of the leader carries the most weight. That's my first quote that I, I, I have several asked. I have 10 pages of notes. <laughs> so as I told you last night, I got a lot of notes. I did a lot of game study film. Um, the voice of the leader carries the most weight. What do you mean? Well, in any area of life, whether mm -hmm. it's the leader on a job, the leader in a locker room, or in, in, in my book, the leader in your home, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that voice carries the most weight. And I think we all need to stop and evaluate where we are in that role because we all at some, at some point in our life, our, our voice is the leading voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and it might just be the, the leading voice for yourself. What are, you, what are you saying to yourself? Does it align with God's written word? Are you saying things that are true? Are you saying things that are an attack from the enemy that you've just bought into and now you start repeating it yourself? So I think the voice of a leader, I know it, it has the most impact and carries the most weight. Absolutely. And I agree with you hundred percent. And I'm not trying to fly through because I could unpack every one of these for a long time, but oh, um, good. not every, this one, there's two that I have. This one is the one, there's two that I think I want to etch in stone one day. Not everything that gets your attention deserves your attention. 
what do you what do you mean there? Because I love that quote. Yeah. Well, how, how many things already this morning? I've been up from I don't know three hours, three or four hours. How many things have tried to grab my attention? Right. It, it, it's almost an endless list already. The, mm -hmm. the voices, the messages, the things I see, the things I see on TV, all the just the the it's just nonstop the attacks that are fighting for our attention, the attention of our heart, the attention of our eyes, the attention of our ears. Uh, but not everything deserves to have our attention. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we can't stop those things coming at us, but we can certainly control what gets inside of us. And I know God has really taught me a lot about that in terms of the, the value of where I place my eyes, uh, the value of what I allow into my ear, which eventually gets into my heart, how guarded I am with that, with, with having a close circle of guys around me that are my accountability group. Uh, because there's so many things, Aaron, as you, as you know, and your listeners know right now that are fighting for our attention mm -hmm. and, and, and most of them aren't good. Most of them aren't good. The, the world today is trying to pull us away from God instead of attracting us to God. We have to be very intentional about what we ultimately give our attention to. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you do such a great job in the book of giving us some, 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 so these aren't just quotes and that's what I want everybody to hear. Get the book because you, you don't just drop a quote. You also drop a quote and then some guidelines and some roadmap for us to get there. And that's why I love the book so much. Um, the next one, I, and I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's a long paragraph. The, the short of it is the cliff notes version is you pray before every game that you do. And that uh -huh. I think in a world of Twitter trolls and look, I, I, I'm a college basketball fan. There's, I have some favorites and some non favorites that I listen to. I wonder why ESPN some, puts some guys on and doesn't highlight other guys. And I, you know, all that you pray before every game that what you say reaches your audience. Is that, is that fair to, did I say that the right way? Yeah. I just finished my 23rd year with ESPN. I've done games. Gosh, all from, from Alaska to Maui to Atlantis to the SEC to every major conference. I've been all over the world in college basketball. God's been very good to me, but he's also given me a platform and a stage. And I want to make sure that when I'm doing my job, my words are uh, accurate. They are uh, they 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 come from an educated, uh, prepared uh, uh, view of me. Uh, but ultimately, my words are protected by God. I'm honoring him with how I work, uh, mm. all those things. So uh, I, I say that because I use that as a demonstration in the book. I put so much emphasis on my words for two hours on national TV. Why don't I have that same importance for the other 22 hours of the day? Mm. Uh, because my tongue sometimes loses its discipline uh, off the TV. And that continues to catch ke ke capture my attention, uh, drive me to be better as a leader in my home, as a husband, as a dad, mm -hmm. knowing that everything, everything I say uh, is, uh, is, is going to be taken to truth by somebody. So uh, yeah, that's a, yeah, I, I even, even this year, I did most of my games. I did think that 55 games this year, 45 of those were in my home office right here mm -hmm. where I'm sitting right now. But I still pray before every broadcast that God would speak through me my tone would be right. My attitude would be right. Uh, and I would, uh, you know, honor him with how I work. It's pretty simple as how I say it. Well, and you, you've teed it up perfectly. And I want to say when I read the book, Quiet Strength by Tony Dungy, um, I kept saying, is this guy for real? Like, is this guy real? And I, I want you to know, there's only one other time that's happened in my life whenever, and I've read a lot of books. Um, yeah. There's only one other time that's happened is when I read yours. Um, is this guy for real? Like, does that really happen? And, and I do believe based on everything I read and everything I've seen in your life, both socially and, and anything I know about you, it is, you are real. And what the people will read in the book is absolutely who you are. And that's, uh, that's the mark of a real, just, it's just amazing. And that's why I appreciate it so much. So yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So you teed it up perfectly because the next three quotes are these, um, I am reminded that how you speak to your children becomes their inner voice. And it's one of the most important things a parent should understand. Wow. And let, let me get the other two out and then we'll talk. Um, as a dad, the impact of the words is heavier than the words of anyone else in my daughter's life. No one can tear her down or build her up quicker than I. 
one more to go. Um, as the designated leader of my home, our words should have the most impact. The question becomes, what impact are those words truly having? Coach, that's those three things. I have chills right now because those three things as a dad of three children, myself, two daughters and a son, man, um, the first one, especially um, that becomes their inner voice. Can you talk about that for a minute? Unbelievable quotes. Yeah, well, I, I think especially for a dad with daughters, mm -hmm. I think we need to realize that the example we set, the words we use, the tone we use, uh, how we lead our family is pretty much going to be what they end up being attracted to in their home husband someday. Absolutely. That's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. But that, that's, that's, that's the job that God gave us. Mm -hmm. and, and I think many men run from that, ignore that. Don't emphasize that enough. I am far, far from perfect, man, in that area. Right, right. But I do know our 15-year-old daughter looks at me in a way that she looks differently than any other man in her life. Mm -hmm. And I only have so many years to make that impression, uh, to speak my words into her heart with not only the, the, the truth of what I'm saying, but how I'm saying it. Uh, because she's going to carry that with her, I think, throughout her life. And my voice, she has a lot of voices in her life and she will going forward. Mm -hmm. But I think at the core of who she becomes, how she sees life, uh, the value she puts in a husband someday, the expectations of what the house is supposed to look like, it's all going to be set by me mm. or you or any other dad listening to this right now. Yeah. And, and, we, and we can we can ignore that. We can brush that away. We can de-emphasize that, or, or we can step up and say, you know what? God's blessed me as a leader and I need to lead. Yeah. I need to lead the right. I don't have not, not, I'm not saying I'm going to be perfect about it, but I do need to be intentional about how I'm leading my home yeah. and the voice that I have in my wife and my daughter's ear mm -hmm. or my son. Just, mm -hmm. I'm just speaking specifically about a daughter because that's what we have. Right. Right. You nailed it. And, and I, I am firmly with you on all that. And, and um, again, I don't want to skip quickly to the next thing, but um, you said something in the book as well that I, I came from a um, I, I'm in I'm in the amateur sports world as an occupation. And so I see this a lot with parents. And, and as again, I'm a parent of three children, three athletes. Um, this was such an important thing. Uh, the success or lack of success of your children have in, or I'm sorry, let me start up. The success or lack of success our children have in sports is not an indication on how good of a parent we are. But having a child in a, that is respectful of authority, disciplined with their, own le, uh, with their own tongue, gives great effort and is coachable, tough and caring teammate is a direct reflection of who we are as a mom and dad. Can you talk about that for a second? Because I think that's so missed in our world today. I think we, let me just for a second, we, 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 we see our kids, too many people are living through their kids for what they didn't do or, or look at their kids on the field as a reflection on them. Can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, I, I think, I think there's a lot of people missing on that. I, I saw it when I was coaching at the college level and how parents acted at summer AAU events, right? And the pressure, the embarrassment they were putting on their own children, mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, uh, your value as a parent, how you're judged as a parent, is not going to be how good your son shot the three-point shot, absolutely, or how fast your daughter was in track, or how good of a cheerleader your daughter was. No, that will never come up in a conversation with God. What will come up is how did you lead your child? How did you teach absolutely. your child? What did you emphasize to your child? Uh, what, what, what seeds did you plant in the heart of your child? And it has nothing to do with uh, those uh, accomplishments that they have on the field, on the track, on the dance floor, whatever. But man, how easy it is to miss on that. And, and to think that if our, if our daughter's not on the front row of the cheerleading formation, she's on the back row, that's a reflection of us and and or if my son's the doesn't get to play as many minutes, he doesn't get to shoot the ball. Just keep on going down the line. We get it confused and think that's a reflection on me as a parent. Our pride gets involved. We put more pressure on kids. We say things to coaches we shouldn't be saying. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not it. Yeah, that's not it. That's not it. This is a very, very temporary period of your life with your child. Absolutely. And make sure that that 
again, that, that voice, how you're leading them has, has a lifelong impact and implications and eternal impact and implications and, and not the other thing. It's, it's so easy for the, for the world, man, to drag us into uh, my two kids down the road made the travel ball team and, and my son didn't. Mm-hmm. And the pressure, the, 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 the out of balance that your house now becomes, mm-hmm. it is very real in our country right now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I love, and again, I think we could spend 20 minutes on every one of these quotes that I've given you. Um, but you know, it is Easter week. I don't know when people are going to hear this, but when you and I are recording, it's Easter week. We're yeah. actually just a few days away from um, Good Friday. And I know that's important to you. I know it's important to me. Um, so let's jump on forgiveness for a minute, because one of the quotes that you said is, there is no other act that is tied to obedience more than the act of forgiveness. Can you talk about forgiveness for a minute? Yeah, that's that that chapter has resonated with more people than any other chapter in the book. It's tough. Uh, that's what I've heard back from because it's hard. It's and, hard. And, 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 and all of us, if we take the time to really get quiet and get very authentic and very real with God mm-hmm. and let him speak to us, we probably have some type of unforgiveness in our heart that that needs to be dealt with. Not because I'm saying it, but because God's written word says it. Absolutely. And God took me through that process. Over, over, different, for, over some different circumstances in my own life and taught me, first of all, my entire relationship with him is based upon forgiveness mm-hmm. and, and the importance that he places on that word with us, with everyone that comes across our path in our life. And when you start digging into forgiveness, like God asks us to, to, to dig into forgiveness, it will change you as a person. Yeah. Uh, it will keep your heart clear before God. But the reason why I made that statement is it does not come natural. There's nothing about forgiving on the level that God asks us to forgive that we are wired to do just naturally. Therefore, it is a becomes an act of obedience. Am I going to do what God tells me to do in his written word in regard to this bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness I have in my life, or am I not? It comes down to that. It comes down to a choice saying, God, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it because you've told me to do it. Help me, teach me, show me, be patient with me, but don't let me off the hook in this area of my life. Man, it's awesome. I know we're running up against your 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 heart stop. Um, no, we're good. I got five more minutes. Five more minutes. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, he just said he's running five minutes late, so we're good. Man, see, that's a guy. That's a that's a. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is the most important one, and this is a life quote for me again, etched in stone. The rest of my life, if something's going to be important to you on the last day of your life. You better make it important to you now. Can you talk about that? Well, just I would ask our listeners right now to just think quickly, what's going to be important to you on the last day of your life? Right. Uh, it, it's probably not going to be uh, how, how, how well my uh, daughter did in dance. Oh, OK, mm-hmm. um, those would those be some good memories. Absolutely. But, but, but what's going to be important on your last day? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, to me, it is, am I, am I right with the Lord? Mm-hmm. Am I, did I live my life in a way that I was called to, I was called to live? Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I was perfect, but, but did I keep God in the place in my life that he deserves to have? Absolutely. I think we're, I think most people are going to want to know that and have that peace about them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's something that you probably shouldn't wait till the last 30 minutes to figure out. Right. Um, how did I treat people? How did I treat people that, that God crossed my path over all those years? Absolutely. Uh, do I have a clean heart towards others? Mm-hmm. Uh, the relationship with uh, not only my wife or my or or my husband, but our, our kids, our family members. How did I lead them? How did I treat them? How did I teach them? Uh uh, all those things. What what did I do with my time in terms of investing with others, or did I live a life that was all about me? Mm-hmm. I think that's probably most one of the most important things when we get to the end and we look back is is what did I do with my life? Was it Absolutely. all about me, mm-hmm. or was it all about others? Right. Uh, I I think there's a right and a wrong answer to that. Right. I think there's a right and a wrong answer to that. So. If those things are going to be important the last day of your life, if we all knew when that was and we had so many mm-hmm. hours left, mm-hmm. I think you have to make it important now. Mm. 
and, and you have to make sure that you're that you're doing your your very best and your heart is right and checking those boxes as you go. Absolutely. The two things I always believe is that God's going to ask us two questions. It's not how did your son or daughter or you do and whatever it is that you did. It's mm -hmm. what did you do to glorify my name and what did you do with the talents I gave you? I truly well, believe in my life that those are the two things that God's going to ask me one day. And how am I going to how am I going to answer those? Yeah. You know, and that 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 drives me. Um, and that quote that you that I just read about if it's not important, you know, if it's important to you on the day you die, it better be important to you now, uh, whether sure. that's your, you know, get it right. You got time. So um, before we get off, what are the best ways for people to get your book and uh, what, you know, just and I'll get the links and everything. But what's the best way yeah. for people to get your book? Because I absolutely believe everybody has to read this book. Well, thank you, Aaron. It's the, yes. the, the best way. It, it's available on Barnes and Noble and Amazon and all that. The best way is through the website they set up for it, CoachJimmyDykes.com. Okay. Because those books come to me about every two or three days. I write a personal note in them, autograph the book, and they get out. Uh, that's probably the quickest way to get them from what people have told me. And they have the nice personalized touch from me signing those books. I sit in my office right here two or three times a week and do that. So Awesome. And I would encourage I would encourage the listeners to go to that website, CoachJimmyDykes.com, and order the books there. So uh, I, I know this; it's I don't know what the cost of the book is now, twenty two bucks or something. But it's a great investment in yourself. Absolutely. Right. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna call if you're really serious about making change in your life. Uh, more importantly, allowing God to make a change in your life. Mm -hmm. I think this book will do that if mm -hmm. you take the time to read it and get quiet before God and, and carve out time and space in your heart to let him truly speak to you about important stuff in life. Uh, I know, I know God has written that book with that purpose. So, uh, I really appreciate you having me on your oh, yeah. uh, phenomenal in your questions and your preparation. I wish we could spend more time today, mm -hmm. but down the line, we'll do it again down the line. Just let me know. I, I really appreciate you having me on today and uh, happy Easter to, to everyone. And man, that's the most important day coming up on Sunday mm -hmm. when they realize that tomb was empty. And there's a reason because he's alive right now, man. So thank you very much, Aaron, for having me. Yeah, uh, this has been such an honor. And uh, and I know we're right up against it, but I, I do want to thank you, coach. I know we've, you know, we, we, we tried so much and I know we had a lot of moving dates. I ask you right in the middle of your busiest season and oh, who does that, but, but thank you. <laughs> you, you, you are a man of integrity, um, I, I'm just, a, I'm such a fan and we've exchanged a lot of emails. I'm so yep. thankful for you, for your message, for this book. Uh, it's incredible. And I wish you nothing but success in everything that you do. I'm a fan. I'm not an SEC fan. I'm an ACC guy. So, all right, before go. we get off quick question. Now this, huh? this may, this will, this won't age well because we only got a week. Who's your championship favorite? Gonzaga. Yeah. yeah. From day one. When I watched Come him on. play the first couple of times, I just, yeah. They're, they're the best team. That doesn't Absolutely. mean they're going to win. But if you look at who's got the best players left in the tournament, the Gonzaga, may, they, they may have the best three, and they're all on the same team. Right. Between Suggs, Kispert, and uh, Drew Timmy. But So good. Man, just, just one game. They are so good. So, all so right, Aaron. Good. Thanks for having right. me, buddy. Thank Bye, you. Man. We'll talk soon, Coach. Bye. Okay. Right. Stay in touch. All righty.